Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivision here, and this is video number four in my error correction series. If you want to see the other videos in this series, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. Just a few things before we get started. One, be sure to have your writing material ready so you can take notes and try the questions. Two, be sure to visit the website so you can download a handout on error correction. And there are about seven other handouts there as well. Three, be sure to visit my Facebook page. You can find a link in the description and you will find there free past paper solutions in POA, maths and admats for about 10 or 12 years. And four, well, I was going to say check the description for timestamps to jump around the video, but this video shouldn't be very long as we only have one type of error to deal with. Speaking of that, let's get into the work. Okay, so for those of you keeping track, we've done seven types of errors so far. We've done errors of omission, commission, principle, original entry, transposition, compensating errors, and complete reversal of entries. And you might be saying, well, Chris, my textbook only has seven types of errors. My teacher only gave us seven types of errors. But there is an eighth type. And no, we're not talking about errors that do affect the trial balance. We are still talking about errors that do not affect the trial balance. This type of error is called a compound error. And it basically is a combination of any or all of the, I'm not sure to combine all, <laughs> but a combination of any of the above errors. My errors, my examples, and my questions for you are going to focus on errors of reversal combined with errors of original entry. Now, there are other types of combinations, but I'm going to leave those for you to experience on your own. <laughs> kind of wicked, right? Anyhow, so let's take a look at our <coughs> sheet right here, somewhere, somewhere on that side, I believe, right? So let's go. So we have compound errors, right? So as I just said, these are errors, right, that are a combination of two or more types of the previous types of errors. Um, so let's take a look at the example. Let's get into it one time. So we have a payment of rent expense by check. And it was entered on the debit side of bank, so debit side of bank, and credit side of rent account as 3700 So we have two things that went wrong there. So one, we have a payment of rent expense by check. So let's, let's, let's take it one step at a time. The payment of rent expense by check. So let's go up to the double entry rules and see what was supposed to have been debited and what was supposed to have been credited. So if we pay something with a check, that means our asset of bank is going to decrease because money is coming out of the bank, which will require a credit. And that credit, so that as the credit, the debit will go to the expense, the rent expense, which is, well, I guess increasing, and that would require a debit. Let's go across the T accounts and take a look at how this was supposed to look. So the rent expense account, we're supposed to debit there. So rent, no, no, sorry, 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 bank, right? So you're gonna put bank, 2,500. And in the bank account, you're supposed to put 2,500 rent expense but was that what happened let's go back across to the question and take a look at what the question said went wrong so we have it was entered on the debit side of bank and the credit side of rent at 3700 so going back to the t accounts it was entered on the sorry one second right ah, right on the debit side of rent as 3700 and on the credit sorry debit side of bank as 37 and credit side of rent as 3700 so this and this that was supposed to happen didn't happen so how do we correct this now think back to what we did before even if we didn't if we didn't look at the previous videos let's think about it in double entry we have two things to do to an account you can either debit it or credit it and they both work against each other right debits in debits decrease credits and credits decrease debits in the same account that is so if you have a credit in an account that's not supposed to be there how do you think you're going to get rid of it or counterbalance it you have to go on the credit side and put an entry this an entry for the same amount that shouldn't be on the credit side all right so what's going to happen is that this debit will cancel this credit similarly in the bank account we have a debit that should not be there how do we fix that you have to go on the credit side and enter the same 3700 sorry right so now we've undone the wrong we have to now do the right we've taken out the error but we still haven't put in the transaction as it should have been entered so what was what was it supposed to be so we saw it a little a little while ago we had to debit rent expense oops sorry for 2500 so that's the right amount and in the bank account we're going to do rent expense right for 2500 as well so if we go across to the journals 
we're going to see how to enter the correcting entries. Now, I'm doing this, I'm doing this in two steps. All right, so the first step is to undo the wrong entry. So that was, remember we had a, we had a debit that shouldn't have been there in bank and a credit that shouldn't have been there in rent expense. So we had to debit rent expense for 37, that was the incorrect amount, and credit bank for 3,700 as well. So that's undoing wrong. Then to do the right, you have to, once again, you, you're gonna debit bank, sorry, debit rent expense, my apologies, debit rent expense for 2,500, the correct amount, and credit bank as well for 2,500 for the amount that it should have been credited for. But we see in here something that kind of resembles when we did error of complete reversal of entries, in that we have two debits to an account and two credits to an account. Can we combine those two debits into one and two credits into one? Yeah. Let's go to the T accounts for a second and take a look. So in the rent expense account, we have two debits and they total the 6,200. Uh, sorry. And in the bank account, we have two credits that total the 6,200 as well. So we could do a single debit to rent for 62 and a single credit to bank for 62. And that way we'll save some writing and some time. So if we go down a little bit on this side, right, we could do a combined, right? I call it a compound or combined general journal entry. Oops, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Right, so you're seeing our debit to rent for 62, a combination of the 37, that was to eliminate the incorrect amount and the 25 to put in the right amount and the credit to bank for 62, a combination again of the 37 to eliminate the incorrect amount and a 25 to put in the correct amount, right? My narration could do some work. You could enter a bit more detail if you want, but don't go overboard, all right? And you can see my special note, you do not need to show all three of the above entries, either the first two or the third one. And my preference is actually the third one, all right? as I say right here, <laughs> okay? All right, so what we're gonna do now, let's scroll down a little bit, and we're gonna give you guys a couple to try, but of course, you're gonna have to try one at a time because they're a little long, okay? So let's take a look at practice question 8A. So um, take a pause, take a read and try the question. You tried it? How did it go? But let's take a read of the question together. So it says that the accounting entries for a credit purchase of 1600 from Belief were entered on the wrong side of both accounts as 2400. So a credit purchase. So what was, the, what was supposed to be the debit for a credit purchase? Let's go up to the double entry rules. So a credit purchase, purchases is an expense. Sorry, right. If we're making a purchase, our expense is increasing, which would require a debit to purchases. So we were supposed to have debited purchases. And similarly, if it's a credit purchase, it means you're buying it on credit, which means you owe money for it, which means you are incurring a liability, which itself is increasing, which will require a credit. Now, we were supposed to debit purchases, credit, credit creditor, but we didn't. Let's go back down to the information. It said it was entered on the wrong side of both accounts, right? So it means that we debited the creditor and we credited purchases. Let's look at the T accounts. So purchases was credited for 2400, all right? Creditor uh, B dot leave. And creditor was debited. Um, purchase, whoops, yeah. Purchases, 2400. And 2400 was the wrong amount. It was supposed to be 1600. How do we fix this? Well, once again, first thing we have to do is undo the wrong. So we're going to go on the debit side here, creditor, B dot, leave, oops, leave, and we're going to put 2400 to take out the 2400 on the credit side that shouldn't be there. Similarly, we're going to go down here, and we're going to do um, a credit of 2400 to eliminate this 2400 on the debit side. But we still have entries that were supposed to have been made. What were those entries? Well, we were supposed to have debited purchases for 1600 uncredited creditor for that same six oops not 17 1600 right so let's go across to the general journal and take a look at what's supposed to happen there so in eliminating the wrong we debit purchases for 24 and we credit creditor for 2400 as well All right i just did some very shorthand narrations you could fix those by now you should be able to <laughs> i hope right and then entering the right one so we debit purchases again for 1600 this time and credit the creditor again for 1600 to put in the amount that should have been put in. 
Now, what was the single journal entry, or single debit, single credit that could have been made in order to correct this error? Well, we have two debits to purchases for, well, one for 24, one for 1600. That's 4,000 in total. And we have two credits to creditor, one for 24, one for 16. So that's also 4,000. Right, so what do we have to do? We will take a single debit to purchases for 4,000 and a single credit to creditor for, uh, for 4,000 as well. And this is to correct a compound error where you had a reversal and original entry error. Okay, let's take a look at the second example. Okay, so take a pause, take a read, try the question and unpause. All right, how did it go? So let's take a read. So the bookkeeping entries for the payment of motor expenses by check, 15,000, were entered on the wrong side of both accounts for 12,005. So payment of motor expenses by check, right? Let's go up to the double entry rules. So motor expenses is an expense. It's increasing or we're paying money to it. So you're supposed to debit the motor expenses account. The asset of bank was decreasing because it paid by check. So assets and that decreases with the credit. So you were supposed to debit motor expenses and credit bank, but we didn't. Let's go across to the tier accounts to see what happened. So we were supposed to debit motor expenses, credit bank, but they were entered on the wrong side of both accounts for 12,500. Motor expenses and then motor expenses, 12,500 and you put bank. And it was supposed to be 15,000. How do we fix this? To, to remove a credit that shouldn't be there, we go on the debit side, right? So bank, 12,500. And to remove a debit that shouldn't be there, we go on the credit side, motor expenses, 12,500. Right. Oops, I was supposed to put an S there. Nice. Now, we're not done because the entry was supposed to be made for 15,000. So, we need to go back on the, the debit side of, of motor expenses, sorry, and put the debit for 15,000. And we also need to go on the credit side of bank and put in the 15,000 that should have been there. Now, what do the journal entries look like? So, if we're doing separate journal entries, we're going to put a debit to motor expenses for 12,500 and the creditor bank for 12,005 to eliminate the incorrect entries that were made initially. And then we're going to do a debit again to motor expenses for 15,000 and the creditor bank for 15,000 to show what should have been done in the first place. Can we combine these two separate entries into one? Yes, we can. So if we scroll down, we're going to see the compound journal entries. So we have two debits the motor expenses, one for 12, five, one for 15, totaling 27.5. Similarly, for bank, we, had a, we have two credits, one for 12, five, one for 15, totaling 27.5. Okay, so that's about it for error correction and errors that don't affect the trial balance. All right, guys, so there you have it. That was the last video in the series for errors that do not affect the agreement of the trial balance. The next series will cover errors that do affect the agreement of the trial balance. And that will include talking about suspense accounts. And I'll keep you in suspense for that because that'll be a few weeks away. <laughs> All right. Um, this is um, early December and I have some stuff to do. So I won't be making any videos until early 2021. All right. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching, for making this year, this COVID-19 2020 year still pretty decent as a matter of fact. Right? I appreciate each and every one of you taking a look at my videos and commenting and asking questions and, and showing me, me that you appreciate my work. I really, really am grateful for that. Okay, guys? So I want everybody to stay safe because I want to see everybody back in 2021. Right? We're going to keep attacking POA until we get good at it. All right, guys? If you guys want to see any more videos, please be sure to give those videos on that side a click. Of course, on my face, you could click to subscribe. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to visit the website to get your handouts for free. Anyhow, guys, that's about it for this time. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.